the 14 inch class of laptops are getting pretty interesting now. In a conventional thin and light form factor, you can now have a dedicated GPU that can handle some pretty serious games. And the display isn't compromised either, so it can be great for both gaming and productivity. And in my opinion, this is one of the prettiest ones. The Omen Transcend 14 comes in both black and white, so when Omen asked if they could sponsor a showcase video, I said, of course, and here it is. This is a packaging. When I first picked up the Omen laptop, I was like, this is a gaming laptop? It's just so thin. At the rear, the thickest part, it's only 0.71 inches. It's also very light at 3.6 pounds. And that's really impressive for something that can go up to an Intel Core Ultra 9 185H and has a dedicated GPU up to RTX 4070 and 32 gigs of RAM. So it comes with a 140 watt USB-C adapter, but it also comes bundled with a headset. It's not really what you see as a laptop accessory every day, but this bundle is pretty cool because these HyperX Cloud3 wireless headset automatically pairs with the Transcend 14. Like you literally just put it on, power it on and then it's connected. And it's a 2.4 gigahertz ultra low latency connection. Okay, so this 14 inch laptop has a pretty minimal design. It's nothing too crazy. The chassis is a magnesium aluminum alloy, which is lighter than just aluminum. It's a matte finish that feels pretty nice and it comes in both shadow black and ceramic white. On the black one, you can sometimes see some fingerprints, but on the white one, there's none at all. It's super clean. But when you first open up the laptop, it's like a color vomit, but in a good way. The RGB lighting strategy is actually pretty interesting. The keys are what they call pudding style, and each key has a translucent rim, and that lets the RGB light underneath to shine through much more than on a typical fully opaque keycap. There's also no gap between the keys, so the keyboard is just like filled with color. And I love it. One of the first things that I did was play around with the lights in the Omen Light Studio. There are four zones that you can individually customize. Look at how cool this looks. This is the wave effect. It can even display colors of a photo, so you can match the colors to your wallpaper. This looks so clean. But looks aside, this keyboard feels great for typing too. There's a good amount of travel. Typing on a keyboard without any gap in between the keys can feel a little bit weird and can be prone to misclicks. But the keycaps here are not just flat, but instead they're shaped more like the keycaps on a typical mechanical keyboard. Actually, these keycaps are almost the same shape as the keycaps on my mechanical keyboard right here. So it feels quite good. And I think the trackpad is great too. It gives a very solid feeling physical click. And as for the screen, so it's a 2.8K 120Hz screen. Of course, one of the first things that I did was to watch some 8K K-pop dances. And this screen just looks amazing. It's so sharp and the OLED contrast just looks so satisfying and nice. It's a glossy screen with very thin bezels and it can go up to a respectable 500 nits. For indoor use, that's perfectly fine. If you wanna lay on the grass, bathe in the sunshine, it might be a little bit of struggle. Okay, so the Omen Transcend 14 is certainly a well-designed machine but none of it really matters if it doesn't perform well. The configuration that I have has an Intel Core Ultra 7 155H and an NVIDIA 4060 GPU with 16 gigs of RAM. It's a mid-tier spec and I think it might be the one that makes the most sense because the GPU is only fed up to 65 watts. But actually, hidden inside of the Omen Gaming Hub app, you can enable the setting that lets the computer have 15 more watts for the entire system. And when in the setting, both the CPU and GPU put out respect respectable numbers in synthetic benchmarks. Over 12K for Geekbench Multicore and over 9K for Time Spy. For me, it had no problems playing Flight Sim, which is one of the heaviest games at ultra settings. It was smooth the entire time with FPS around 30. And when I set the graphics to high end, the FPS increased to around 40. So overall, great performance here. And the OLED screen is just like the cherry on top. It looks incredible. The only thing is the fans were quite loud the entire time. But you probably wear a headset while gaming anyways, and the HyperX Cloud 3 do block out quite a bit of noise. It's also great that they just connect automatically so I don't have to fumble around with Bluetooth. Despite how small the chassis is, it actually didn't really get that hot. 71 degrees Celsius for CPU and 67 degrees Celsius for GPU. This does kind of come at the cost of fan noise. On the surface, the hottest part of the keyboard deck reached well into the high 40s, but the palm rest and trackpad area actually stayed decently cool, hovering around low 30s. I only found the center of the keyboard the hottest part kind of uncomfortable to touch. The rest, I didn't really have a problem. The bottom of the laptop is slightly cooler than the keyboard deck, with the hottest part reaching around 40 degrees and it doesn't feel too hot 
hot on the lap. Just make sure to not block the fans, which you can see here. There are two of them, one on each side of the laptop. With this level of performance, I was pretty confident to do some creative work on it. And it was great for video editing. It was snappy, no annoying lags. It did all the things I want without being too loud. The fans were definitely still audible, but way less loud than when gaming. And here it is rendering a 10 minute long 4K video. This one took about 15 minutes, which in the grand scheme of things is pretty good. But of course, the render time really depends on your exact edit. And throughout editing, the surface temperature never got uncomfortably hot. Intel's new hyperbaric cooling technology definitely helps with this. They call it the dual channel flow, where the air doesn't just flow through the heat sinks, but also directly over the internals in the middle region. And as you can see, this part does get pretty hot. This new tech basically redirects more fresh air to those parts with a pressured zone. And for more regular workloads, it's probably best to have this laptop on the balance setting. It pretty much stays cool the entire time, and there's almost no fan noise. When you put on a video, it completely covers it up. And the speakers sound pretty good too. It sounds clear and not like it lacks space, which is a downfall of many laptop speakers. When the keyboard lights are shut off or switched to a more subtle color profile, it just looks like a regular work laptop. You can bring this around with you to class, and then afterwards, wherever you are, you can continue working on it or even play some games. It's really nice that this laptop is so light. They want it to feel like you can go anywhere and do anything with Intel Core Ultra processors. When you're in a classroom or a library, as long as you're not like playing the heaviest game on it, you don't really need to worry about being that guy with a computer that everyone can hear. The fans are usually very quiet. They're barely audible if you're just doing some web browsing, but you can have more control over the fans by making a fan profile and then running a dynamic fan curve based on the CPU or GPU temperature. But if you're just doing some regular work or studying on it, you can probably just use a software to choose using only the integrated GPU. And that can really help lower the power consumption, which puts out less heat and also less fan noise. And speaking of the battery life, so I tested it on the balance mode using the hybrid GPU and I kept the brightness around 70%. With these settings, I got about five hours of use when using the browser and occasionally watching some 4K videos. But if you need it to last longer, you can try switching to the eco mode. And lastly, the Omen Transom 14 has a pretty good selection of ports too. On the left side, there's a Thunderbolt 4 port and a headphone and mic combo. In the rear, there's another USB-C port that supports 10 gigabit speeds and also an HDMI 2.1 port. And on the right side, there are two USB-A ports that support 10 gigabit speeds. And that's it for the Omen Transcend 14. Overall, it's a nice package and you can order the Transcend 14 on omen.com.